Congratulations, this is your new ZS EV. Now before we get started, I'm going to take you through a few aspects of the car. And one of those is that the car is going to come with two keys, alright? So, to unlock the car, I can operate that through the remote control. To lock it, I can do the same thing. From this location, I've got full opportunity to get in and out of the car. But when I lock the car, everything stays locked, including the doors in the back of the car so let's have a look through the car now and see where we get to so from the back it's well appointed it's a nice design and certainly be uh, good to see on the road from the left hand side you can see it's got some great lines and it's got some nice uh, wheels on the car from the front it's an upgrade from the last car as in that it had a grill this one doesn't have a grill now in the front you'll also see things like cameras and you'll see this down here which is part of your autopilot some of the safety regime that comes with the car i'm going to unlock the car now and when i do that that gives me access through to the charging ports if i lock the car and that charging port is open uh, or closed it will be locked and no one can gain access to it i'm going to show you just a couple of things inside here so in the very top here we have what we call our type 2 to type 2 charging cable this is for something like at home or at work you might have a facility for that um, this will take from 7 kilowatt up to, to uh, 11 kilowatt charging and then inside here is our fast charging mode so if you go to a facility and it is offering 50 kilowatt charging um, this is the type of uh, fixture you will see or plug you will see it'll have the two ports on the bottom which is a DC charging and also uh, the AC at the top so it is a quite a big plug but there are locations around that have these facilities that you can use currently some of those are chargeable so using charge net to charge it uh, at those facilities will require a fob key and some credit on a card now this here on the right hand side indicates the level of charge in the car and when you first put the charging cable in what will happen is this will go green uh, and to blue and then that will tell you it's in charge mode so again <clears throat> this one's for generally at home or a facility at work where it's a uh, controlled environment for charging so we'll close that off now. There's a little spot in here for just in case it gets towed. The car has gone into lock mode. Comes with a seven year warranty and seven year roadside assist. And you'll find that sticker here and on the back side of this, you'll see the 0508 number. Also, you'll see little cameras around the car. This is the camera itself. There's 360 degree cameras in, uh, on this unit. Um, and one of those is also located down the back of the car you can see right there sensors all around the car for a very good reason and that is to sense anything that might be operating that you don't know about when you're around the car now opening your back is relatively easy and we have like a shelf type program in here this is the higher shelf the higher level for uh, items if you want to store them into the bottom low and left left and right hand side you can there's storage underneath and this is where you will find your charging cable for home and i'll pull that out so i can show you that in a second there's an inflation kit down here also that inflation kit is used in case you get a flat tire and you're away from say the city and you need to inflate the tire some rubber sealant will seal the the tire until you get to a location to replace the tire uh, also an emergency triangle which is also supplied inside here as well okay so i'll take this out and this is what you use at home so it's got a three pin on this this end and then on the other end it's got your type 2 to type 2 plug i'll show you how that works in a second okay so let's get back to where we are now let's have a look inside the car itself <clears throat> i can't access the car but with the keys and they're on top of me or they're in my bag i can actually just push this button here unlocks the car okay 
Now I've got access to the front left hand side. I can look inside the glove box and I'll find my service book and my manual if I need it. Remember that service book there is valuable. It'll need to be filled in when the car comes in for a service. From this side aesthetically it looks pretty nice uh, with the exposed stitching in red. And then of course into the back seats you can see there's a generous amount of room in here and if I want to uh, pull the rear seats down. There's a little tag back here. I pull that up and I'll just pull the seats forward. Gives me all that extra space. Okay, let's get round to the driver's side. And once we get into the driver's side again, if I push this button here, I can lock the car or I can unlock the car. Whilst I'm in here, I can turn on to the right hand side. I can see my locks, locking and unlocking. I can also see my uh, windows up and down. Just down here on the lower right hand side are my mirror controls and my headlight controls. Now you'll see there's plenty of room in here. Um, it's very reminiscent of a European styling of a car uh, here in, um, uh, although it's a Chinese company, there was some intuition and help from some European branded cars which are well known in New Zealand for the styling. So I'm in the car. Now the car won't operate too well if I've got any doors open. So I've turned the key, I've pushed the button here and I've started the car. You can see, oh well, I've turned things on anyway. You can see the little the, uh, orange button there. And if I push it again, it goes into a green light and all of a sudden it's gonna ask me whether or not I'm interested in starting the car. For me to start the car, I actually need to put my foot on the brake and it'll go into ready systems mode. And all of a sudden the steering wheel is really easy to maneuver <clears throat> because power is now operating that steering wheel. Now a couple of things I see immediately straight away are things like on the right hand side my power consumption and on my left hand side my kilometres and speed. I've got a vehicle in the middle there. I've also got a lane assist um, uh, monitoring up there and it also shows me at the top left hand side I'm in the driver's seat but I've not got my seat belt on. Down the lower part of the car you'll see down here you'll also see 94% uh, percent and a three in a circle. I'll come to that in a second. So the three in a circle means uh, regeneration mode. That's when the car itself, is when you're driving the car, you can actually regenerate through uh, regenerative braking and or deceleration. So this is called curves, just down here in the middle. And as I toggle through that, if we look at the three, I can change that to a two, it's less aggressive, and then change that to a one where I'm gliding up to the lights and I have to use my brakes to stop. <coughs> In two, slightly a little bit more aggressive, it's softer uh, and certainly got more control over the car. And in three, um, uh, most of my uh, corporates that I work with will operate the car in three around the city and then take it out of three when they go out of town. So it's freer wheeling. Right, on the left hand side you see normal. So normal and we want to change our mode. So the mode's right here, toggling up and down. As I toggle up and down, you see the normal change to echo and I've got 396 kilometers. And if I go to normal, I'm down to 280, uh, 282. And then if I get into sport mode, it's 268. Now, of course, we know what sport mode is. The car's gonna go slightly, uh, perform slightly better or faster, whatever you might wanna call it. And then normal mode, that's when you're sort of going on long distances. If I was going on a long distance, I'd probably put it in an eco mode and try and get the best, the best mileage out of the car I can. Now you'll see on the left hand side, you've got your lights and then you've got your cruise control and the distance control between the car in front of you and behind you also down here. For that to work, you need to be in cruise control and then everything will operate okay. Getting down to here on the right hand side, we've got our wiper controls and a okay, cane that's set to auto. And then what I call this is just down here in my middle. This is where I'm just actually toggling through. I call it a library, it's my nickname for it. Um, and I toggle through and it just gives me information on the car. I can look at all sorts of things like regenerative braking, how long the car's been operating, I can do all of that if I want to. Okay, to alter the steering wheel, I can just do this up and down here, up and down, and then if I don't want to do that, I can get 
well, if I'm happy with that sit, uh, position, I stay there and I don't do anything else. All right, so now we're getting into the infotainment system. This is the nuts and bolts of the car because, of course, this uh, operates and gives you a lot of integration and communication with your phone and or you by looking at things at a glance. So at a glance, I can see the uh, charge is 93. Uh, 82 kilometers of range that matches that down there in normal I've got my radio station it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay navigation if I want to and all I do is just tap this it'll tell me where I am today and this is where I'm sitting and then of course if I want to search I can search something out but if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto you can use that from your phone because I'm sure it's got way more information than reloading it into here so come out of there and remember the golden rule is hitting the home button, the home button anytime you want to go back to this page and then I slide it across. <clears throat> so this is where things get a little bit uh, more technical. If I go into say Bluetooth, this is where I set up my phone, I hit Bluetooth and it starts searching. I can also load my contacts into there and then I can also do some other things as well. Um, you know, make phone calls for instance but let's go out of there all of a sudden and let's go back to the home button vehicle itself vehicle setup there's a number of different features in here and you can either like or dislike them um, one of them is the mg pilot some drivers go and i prefer not to have lane assist so you can get rid of lane assist and it asks you to confirm once you confirm um, you can confirm that too so all the way through there you've got <clears throat> traffic jam assist you've got front collision you've got uh, pedestrian emergency braking i did recommend that you should probably have that on at all time it's uh, generally because of things like electric bicycles and stuff that seem to be moving around faster than the average walker on on a pedestrian um, so look out for that data on the car convenience on the car again all of that is inside there now again what do i do i go back into home and i get out of there now if i'm sitting in the car for instance and i want to see what's going on around me i hit 360 degree view i might be looking for say my daughter's bike she might have left in the driveway or making sure that nothing's around me uh even the dog whatever and as you can see all i'm doing is just pushing areas where i might want to know what is going on with the car i can get into 2d uh 2d mode also which is pretty similar <clears throat> but it just rotates a few things and it's quite cool and people love it um, and again as i turn the steering wheel and you can see me turning the steering wheel now you can also see the direction finder on the uh, camera watching the wheels moving from back to forth okay <clears throat> So outside of there, we've got our air conditioning. I can go in there and I can change the air conditioning up um, and I can put it in different areas. I might pop it onto the top end. I might pop it onto the windows. Um, it's relatively easy to operate. You've got your demister on the front and the rear here. Volume control down here also. Um, and then of course your temperature control for what we're seeing here is air conditioning. Um, one other setting that you might want to set up if you're interested is um, not only your sound system here, you can go into here and you can change that around, loudness, you can go into your EQ, pick pop or vocal and it selects it for you, come out of there all of a sudden and I can go okay well what else have I got um, <clears throat> and I can go through and one in here is called by my phone so this is one where you bind your phone open that up um, load the mg iSmart app to your phone and then after that you're binding your phone through a qr code the qr codes related to the car the app is related to your phone and then links you to the car then what you can do from there is all of a sudden you've got total control over your car from inside your office on a plane in fiji uh, you can turn it on, turn it off, you can turn the heating on before you even arrive. Uh, you can check your battery, a number of different features. It's a great feature to have and again it's in the palm of your hands. So that integration is really really cool. Alright so we get out of there and we're inside out this mode. We've got driver controls, D for drive obviously, N for neutral, R for reverse, let's put it in reverse and all of a sudden my camera's working in front of me. When I want to stop the car, when I stop the car and I want to park it, 
all I do is push the top, it parks it, and you can see it, and you can also feel it when you're parking the car. All right. I want to have a look at, a, at the battery at a glance. It's going to pull that up. All I'm doing is toggling, and it's just going to give me information. All right. So now we're past this piece. I'm going to get into the bonnet, and I'm going to show you the areas you can't play with because it's going to be a bad idea. Right. So let's grab this charger. Let's hit the front of the car. And two things you're going to see when I open up the bonnet here is going to be these bright, bright, bright orange cables. They're high voltage cables, okay? Do not touch those. There's nothing in here that you should be playing with at all. It all comes in for a service. When it comes in for a service, we've got high voltage technicians that touch all this. The only thing you can play in with in here is filling up your water for your for your windows, for your wipers, all right? This is a small battery here. This runs some of the other technology in the car, such as your radio and your wipers. That's recharging whilst you're driving the car, and it's also charging from the other battery. It should never go flat. If it ever does go flat, it's because something has happened, and it's generally got something to do with the driver. They may have not locked the doors when they've left the car, and if they haven't locked the doors when they've left the car, the radio and the lights will all stay on until that battery's flat. Okay, so let's not do that. Right, let's get back into here first. I'm going to show you the Type 2 to Type 2 charging plug and how that works because, of course, what we want to do is show you what comes up on this screen. So there you go, it's telling us it's all blue and it's good to charge and as soon as you start charging it'll come up on there and start going green. Beyond that, the car itself will start showing an indication up on the screen there of a charge but when it's plugged into a wall it'll actually tell you how long it's got before it is fully charged. Alright that's it from me, my name's Darren, I'm your fleet manager. All the best. It's a great car. I look forward to seeing you. Five year, uh, seven year warranty, seven year roadside assist. Thank you very much for buying MG from us here at Tristram.